Hi, and welcome to our video about story poles and the story pole sculpture. So my name is Janice Paul, and I'm an artist, and together with Mary Bow, who is a renowned landscape architect, we are putting together this video to share our vision for a wonderful opportunity to bring community together around art. It is a public installation of art and collectively we will be creating these story poles over the course of the next month or two and the installation will go all over uh, the region and who knows maybe uh, the entire country. So the purpose of this video is to a share what a story pole is and, and describe the concept behind it and b to tell everyone how we're going to make these poles and invite people to uh, get creative and to make them on their own. We'll be doing some workshops uh, where folks can come out and join us, but we also want to give you the information so that you can make your individual story pole. So what is a story pole? Well, for centuries, various cultures have communicated with the heavens through trees. And people have, over the ages, and if you, if you look at Tibetan cultures and, and Far Eastern cultures, they've used uh, trees as a way of communicating, and they've then started to decorate the poles sending various messages up to the heavens. So what we're doing is we're basically going out into the countryside and um, we're, we're collecting these branches, so to speak. It's very, very easy. If there's a storm in your neighborhood, you can go out and you can um, cultivate some, some poles. Um, poles are basically branches. That's really all they are. And uh, for the most part, um, you can even use bamboo. We'll be, we'll be going out into some bamboo fields and cultivating some bamboo as well. Uh, oftentimes people might want to use bamboo because it's a little bit smoother and easier to paint. Um, but for now, uh, I'm just showing you a, a typical pole. I'm about five foot four, so we're talking about poles maybe eight feet like this one, uh, and also maybe upwards of 14 feet is about all you need. So as I said, this is a collaborative community effort, and so while we're having workshops, we also encourage people to go ahead and make some poles on their own. And so you might be wondering, how do I go ahead about doing that? So what we've done is we've set up our own little workshop here, uh, and we'll walk you through the process. So this is actually a shorter pole, but a little bit easier for me uh, to work with at the moment. So basically what we do is we take our pole, we've got it on a couple of saw horses, uh, we've got actually a big, huge sheet of cardboard down to protect the surface of the driveway here, and then we've got some drop cloth draped down over top of that. So as you can see, we've got some poles started here, and this is basically just the base coat. Now, what we can use is some exterior acrylic paint, any kind of paint that you've got lying around, any kind of oops paint, whatever color you want. And the idea is basically to just apply a coating over your, uh, your branch or, or pole, as we are calling them. Now, we've also got an option here. You know, we're just showing you some different options and supplies. We've got some spray paint. Again, keep in mind, if you're going to use the spray paint, obviously you need some protective gear. You don't want to do it on a day that it's any kind of breeze or wind. And so we've got gloves and tape to tape off things. And we've also got a respirator and uh, goggles. Uh, very important when you're using the spray paint. Um, some folks like to paint with gloves on. Uh, I like to get as much paint on me as possible. Uh, it's an artsy thing. Um, anyway, so we've also got, like I said, the exterior acrylic paint. Any color is fine. We've, what we've done here is we've got some base coat. You got yellow, you got peachy. Uh, and then what we start to then come back and do is add different colors to the pole. So we've got a pole here, and actually, you know, they don't have to be just one straight piece. Oftentimes, uh, especially in Tibetan culture, they would use the poles to symbolize, um, you know, the strength and, and helping the tree to stand up, and they almost call them, you know, uh, sort of like a crutch. Uh, and, they, and they put that underneath some of the limbs. So if it's, a, if it's a pole like that, it adds a little bit of uh, interest and opportunity to do some unique and different things there. As you can see here, you know, these are different poles in progress, so you've got all kinds of different colors, and it can be stripes or, you know, just the splattering of paint. So we just want to let you run free, and the idea being that we're trying to tell a little bit of a story and convey a particular message, hopes, prayers, dreams, uh, some folks have, have termed these as peace poles and, and messages of community 
and uh, maybe it's your own personal story. We've seen some where you know you don't have to be an artist. Uh, you can express anything that you're interested in uh, through, through the story poll to tell a message and make a statement. One of the things that we envision for the story poll project is we certainly want uh, this to be something that is an installation that will go to various locations. So it needs to be able to um, with, endure being transported to some degree. So here's a small example. We've got some raffia ribbon, and actually as much as we'd like to use natural materials, uh, this is kind of a plastic sort of a pseudo raffia it seems, but that'll uh, give you the idea of the raffia ribbon itself. Uh, conceptually, uh, it looks natural, but it'll withstand the test of time. And then we're just going to ornament our pole with anything from small pieces of wood to uh, perhaps seashells, uh, medallions, found objects, small stones, anything that you can actually attach to the poles. And, and you can do this all along the pole itself. Now in terms of the messages that you want to write on the pole, you can use a Sharpie marker and you can write your own personal message on the pole. But some folks would like to uh, add something a little bit longer. So what we thought was you can, you can actually print out a poem or a message uh, or a prayer and basically then we're just going to take that and we're going to apply it to the pole, and you can use something like a Mod Podge, which you can get like at a very uh, basic uh, craft shop. And it's almost like a decoupage kind of a technique. And you basically wrap that around. You can, you can place it on in this kind of a fashion here. And you apply the Mod Podge on both sides. And then we'll actually then have to put on some type of a varnish or a shellac. Um, so you can adorn your entire pole in that fashion. Uh, you can also laminate something and perhaps attach that to the pole as well. Uh, so there are a lot of different options. I've seen people use feathers. Um, it's really only limited by your imagination. So just to give you an idea, you know, we've got some, uh, some flowers here that we could certainly wrap with some wire uh, to attach that to the pole. You can also use a power shot staple gun if you like uh, but other things that we might want to explore would include uh, things like uh, we've got um, a jute twine in green and we've got another type of jute twine over here somewhere let's go we got a little jute twine like the natural color and anything like that can be used to help fasten anything that you want to attach to your pole uh, Things like funky tree roots might add a little bit of dimension and fun to your pole. Um, really cool texture on uh, some seashells here. So, you know, let your imagination run wild. Maybe this is a seashell that you got uh, when you were on vacation on your honeymoon and it really means something um, special and significant to you. So, so those are the kind of things that, you know, you might want to share to tell your story. Uh, again, you know, you can really go crazy, but make sure that it is going to be a durable material. That's the key. Transportable and durable. So we're really excited about our first public art installation where the community is going to come together and we're going to build these story poles and we're going to install them. And that will be at Tyler Park Center for the Arts in Bucks County. And we're very, very fortunate to be collaborating with the Tyler Park Arts folks. And we have some upcoming workshops, which are going to be very exciting. Now, an awareness campaign is underway, and this video was certainly part of that awareness campaign. Uh, on September 11th, we know that there's going to be a Northampton Days, and uh, Jen Miller, who's the director of Tyler Arts, will be on hand to give out information about the upcoming Community Days at Tyler, which is a really great opportunity for folks to come out and try their hand at all kinds of different arts. Pottery, painting, anything that you can imagine will be available. And we will also be on hand, and that'll be on September 18th. We'll be on hand to talk about the Story Poll project and how you can get involved. We'll have some samples out, and we'll actually be creating some polls so that you can get a first-hand glimpse of what some of them look like, and to learn more about it and to sign up for the workshops. Now the first big community workshop is going to be on Saturday, September 24th from 10 to 3 at Tyler uh, Park Center for the Arts. Um, we'll be sure to have all the information as to location and how you can participate uh, at the end of the video. Uh, but we want you to know that it's from 10 to 3 
and you can bring anything you would like to contribute to your poll. We will have all the materials there, paint, poles, adornments, embellishments, but as I had mentioned earlier, if you have a special charm or trinket or a poem or something that you would personally like to uh, add to your poll, then we certainly encourage you to bring whatever that might be and, and use the polls that we will have on hand. You're also welcome to bring a poll that you may have started to make or have already made uh, and, and contribute it to this really, really wonderful opportunity to come together as community in the spirit of art and uh, be a part of the story full sculpture. For more information, you can certainly go to and we invite you to www.storypolesculpture.com where you can learn more about the project, sign up for the workshops, and uh, find out how you can personally get involved. We're encouraging school groups to get involved, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, seniors. Anybody can take on a storyboard project and bring them to the Tyler Park or, uh, Center for the Arts and uh, be a part of this wonderful collaborative uh, art effort for this public installation. Okay, so then the next workshop will be October 15th and 16th, which is the annual Craft in the Meadow at Tyler Park uh, Center for the Arts. And that is a really great day. We have hundreds of artisans coming out with their phenomenal works of art. They'll be for sale. There's music, there's food. It's a great family day. And we'll be there from 10 to 5 on both days with a, 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 an area where we'll be creating our story poles. They'll then be installed after Crafts in the Meadow. Now, we'll also have poles on hand that were created from the previous workshop, which, as we said, was on September 24th. That's a Saturday from 10 to 3. Anybody of any age is invited to come, and all the details will be uh, posted on this website, on our website. And um, we'd love for you to come on out. You, you can spend as much time or as little time as you'd like to kind of help us create this community collaborative art installation. So as we've said, the branches and the bamboo that we are going to have on hand or that you can uh, obtain yourselves will be ornamented with color and text. And the idea is to tell a story, put forward wishes, hopes, thanks, offer up messages of peace and love. And you can basically interpret that in any way you'd like. So any craft store has everything that you need. And uh, I had a great opportunity to uh, check out some of the offerings at some of our local craft stores. And I uh, wanted to walk you through some suggestions for materials in building your own story pole. One thing I will advise is while these are some great ideas, just walk through the store and have a field day. The best section of the store I found was actually the clearance aisle. You never know what you might find. This doesn't have to be expensive. Anything that um, is durable and will withstand transportation and the weather is really all you need. So just some basics here. Hearing. We need that for binding other elements to the pole. So we've got our wire, and we can use that uh, to attach just about anything to our pole. Um, also in that same section, there's artificial flowers. That might be nice to use uh, if you want to add a little bit of color or maybe just um, some ivy. They have strings of ivy that you can wrap your pole in. Again, think out of the box and, um, you know, don't be limited by anything. Um, we also have, uh, as we've said, seashells. People always have collections of seashells, and you can always uh, grab a couple from that bowl that's probably sitting somewhere in your house, uh, remembering a vacation. Uh, additional material selections and suggestions. Uh, we have raffia in assorted colors. Again, that's uh, it's like a natural type of a ribbon, and you can use that either by itself to wrap sections of your pole, uh, or to attach, you know, shells, medallions, or the ever popular beads. So there are wooden beads, glass beads, beads of every conceivable size, shape, and color. So um, certainly something that can help uh, brighten up your, your story pole a bit and a uh, good opportunity to uh, include some, uh, some texture and some additional layers of interest. Um, 
is, with regards to how to apply perhaps a longer story that you're trying to tell uh, rather than just writing it, there is the ever popular Mod Podge. And Mod Podge is basically, it's an acid free brand of glue, kind of like Jello, that's the brand name. Um, and it's in any craft store. A uh, small bottle goes a real long way, and it's very useful for collage and decoupage. Additional ideas might be some sort of charms, medallions. There's everything from butterflies, bells, whistles, only limited by your imagination. Uh, you can choose from things like keys. There are so many different varieties of these little types of charms and medallions. Um, to really personalize your story, uh, as well as stickers. Now, I'd caution the stickers only because I'm not sure that that would really adhere to a branch per se. You might want to use a little of the Mod Podge uh, or something like that uh, if you're going to use stickers. But there are also stencils um, that, that look uh, somewhat like these stickers. And so in that regard, um, you can lay a stencil over top and, and, and maybe use some spray paint uh, to spray some whimsical figures onto your pole. Um, again, uh, additional things that you might want to consider are uh, buttons. Uh, just like the beads, they come in all sizes, shapes, colors, dimension. Uh, and you can use, again, any type of wire, string, twine, or raffia to um, string them up and attach them to your pole. For writing your messages, you might want to consider something like a Sharpie marker. There are permanent paint markers, um, but as you can see, they come in every color of the rainbow. Another great category is decorative ribbons. Various uh, thicknesses, colors, all different types of patterns. Many are textured, so there's a lot of opportunities there. Uh, and also tape. Decorative tape is very popular now. Duct tape is no longer just silver. Uh, and so you can get that in every color of the rainbow, just like your Sharpie markers. Um, but they also have um, all different types of patterns and themes on them. So that can add another element of fun uh, to your story and to your overall poll. And actually, you can probably use one of the permanent Sharpie type markers or paint markers on the tape as well, uh, if you're so inclined. So the bottom line is have fun. Use things that you've never used before. Grab things that you might not have thought of before that you might see on the shelf that are shiny and fun and decorative. And just uh, have a good time with it. Uh, you will convey the spirit of, of yourself and, and your story just in the materials you select. But the idea is have fun tell your story, and join together in the celebration of art and community.